Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. For the last few weeks, we've had a close look at Dr. Andrew Wakefield, the disgraced British physician who in 1998 published a paper linking the MMR vaccination with Crohn's disease and eventually autism. Now, in the previous videos in this series, we've looked at how he was working with attorney Andrew Barr to develop evidence for a class action lawsuit against the makers of the MMR vaccination. We had a look at how he falsified his data. We saw how he recruited his patients from the United Kingdom anti-vaccination movement jabs. And when his invasive hospital evaluations of these disabled children did not turn up the link that he had hoped for, he simply falsified his results. We looked at how he planned to reap a financial windfall as a direct result of the vaccine scare that his papers produced. Finally, we saw how his plans fell apart when ethical concerns and concerns of conflict of interest were brought up by the hospital and exposed in the press by investigative reporter Brian Deere. Now, so far, you could say that everything that has been presented here has been the opinion of that investigative reporter and myself as a physician. I'm not even going to personally appear in this video until the end. We are going to concentrate on the findings of the General Medical Council in their investigation into Dr. Wakefield and his colleagues, and I want the emphasis to be on that investigation. So let's cue up the music and get started. Now the first 43 pages of this report outline the care of each of the 12 children. A link to the actual report will be included in the description of this video, and you can review those children individually if you wish. To summarize those findings on the individual children, we can break them down into several categories. Number one, the Ethics Committee approved this research protocol for children admitted after the 18th of December, 1996. The General Medical Council had a significant problem in that many of the children were admitted to the hospital from September until December of 96, prior to the start of the approved protocol by the Ethics Committee. Number two, the children underwent invasive diagnostic testing for which there was no clinical indication. That made them part of a research protocol which did not have ethics committee approval. Number three, in numerous cases, the informed consent that the ethics committee required Dr. Wakefield to ensure was in the clinical record of each child was missing. And number four, the General Medical Council found that many of these children were actively recruited by Dr. Wakefield, Mr. Barr, and the anti-vaccination group JABS. This violates the understanding of the protocol by the Ethics Committee that they would be random children admitted through routine channels meeting a diagnostic criteria over a certain period of time. They were recruited to the study by Dr. Wakefield and the people involved in the MMR litigation. And Dr. Wakefield made numerous statements, both in The Lancet and elsewhere, that these children had just come to him via routine channels with no involvement on his part. So let's pick this up with The Lancet paper. Now, the first problem that the General Medical Council had with The Lancet paper was that Dr. Wakefield should have been aware of the major public health implications of his study and the fact that his study would be reported widely in the world press. And as a result of that, as senior investigator and senior author of the Lancet paper, Dr. Wakefield should have been acutely aware that the accuracy of his reporting of the random nature of these patients coming in consecutively to the hospital meeting study criteria in the period of time covered by the study was very important. Dr. Wakefield failed to disclose the fact that he had personally taken part in the recruitment of a number of these patients, along with Richard Barr and the anti-vaccination group CHAPS. These were not random patients that were admitted to the hospital through normal channels. Not only did he not disclose this, in response to a letter to the editor of The Lancet, he indicated very clearly this was found to be both dishonest and irresponsible and resulted in a misleading description 
of the patient population in The Lancet. The General Medical Council also found that Dr. Wakefield should have known that his stated description of the patient population versus the actual patient population was deceptive. Specifically, child number one, nine, five, and 10 did not constitute routine referrals to the gastroenterology department. Therefore, they should not have been included in the study. It also found that in the case of child two, nine, five, and 12, Dr. Wakefield was personally involved in the recruitment of the child for the study. This is in violation of the description in the Lancet paper and was found to be irresponsible, misleading, and contrary to his duty to ensure that the information in the paper was accurate. In a letter to the editor to the Lancet in May 1998, Dr. Wakefield responded to a question, again claiming that the children were simply random referrals to the service during the study period. This was also found to be dishonest, irresponsible, and contrary to his duty to ensure that the information provided was accurate. In March of 1998, Dr. Wakefield once again claimed that the referral of the 12 children was through standard routes. This again was found to be dishonest, irresponsible, and contrary to his duty to ensure that the information provided was accurate. The General Medical Council also made note of the fact that since this was given at an actual medical meeting in front of other physicians, it had a lot of influence on medical practice. And as a result, Dr. Wakefield's dishonesty was particularly damaging. Furthermore, under conflicts of interest and funding, Dr. Wakefield indicated that the funding for his research was through a special trustee of the hospital. There was no disclosure that that trustee received the money from the legal aid fund and attorney Richard Barr. This acts to conceal what on its face appears to be an obvious conflict of interest, considering the litigation pending for the MMR vaccination that Dr. Wakefield was actively working with. Once again, this was found to be dishonest, irresponsible, and contrary to his duty to assure accurate information was published. Under Section 38, they talk about the patents Dr. Wakefield received for the replacement MMR vaccination and the diagnostic testing. The General Medical Council determined that this was something that needed to be disclosed to the editor of The Lancet to accompany the paper. Dr. Wakefield did not disclose it. Furthermore, it was felt that disclosure of this information was required as a potential conflict of interest. Now, the next section has to do with the transfer factor. That is Dr. Wakefield's replacement for the MMR vaccination. The General Medical Council found that Dr. Wakefield caused this transfer factor to be administered to child number 10. The problem that the Medical Council had was that Dr. Wakefield did not have ethics committee approval for this human testing of his transfer factor. Next, we have the infamous birthday party where Dr. Wakefield, as part of his research, which did not have ethics committee approval, paid children five pounds each for providing blood samples at a birthday party. Later that same day, Dr. Wakefield bragged to the Mind Institute in California in humorous term what he had done at the birthday party. The General Medical Council took a very dim view of this, specifically drawing blood samples from children in exchange for money in a social setting without ethical committee approval. His humorous presentation to the Mind Institute brought the medical profession into disrepute. Following this ruling, in April of 2010, Dr. Andrew Wakefield was struck from the role of physicians in the United Kingdom. So was Dr. Walker Smith. However, Dr. Walker Smith appealed his case, and it was reversed by the high court several years later on a technicality of legal procedure. Basically, it was a due process issue in the General Medical Council. Dr. Wakefield has not pursued this route. In our next episode, we're going to see what the aftermath of this fiasco was and see what happened to Dr. Wakefield. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by today, and there's more to come. 
hit that little like and subscribe button down there and ring the bell icon to know when the next video comes out. Take care, guys.